charge. Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we are going to be talking about some WWE. Yeah, for the first time in three weeks since somebody had to go on vacation for a week and then we had the 4th of July. Mm, that one wasn't my fault. No, but you were still here, so. It's true. Yeah. I, I was here, yes. So, um, are you excited for my party on Saturday? What does that have to do with anything? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's cause, uh, yeah, because it's going to be a, uh, a very interesting theme. All right. I so, just remembered about yeah, that. To bring you guys up to speed, my girlfriend wanted to throw me a poop emoji party because well, that's a thing. Uh, so yeah, which is I said, you know different. what? I want you to throw me a Roman Reigns party. So Matt's definitely on board here. Oh, that's funny. However... This is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Why? Because they don't have that much in The WWE has no faith in anybody to put enough merchandise out for somebody. No. So. Except for, like, maybe Cena and The Rock. That's about it. There is some merchandise still floating around with The Rock on it. Um, John Cena is definitely a mainstay for the merchandise. Mm -hmm. um, we saw party plates that have Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose. Bam! John Cena in the middle. Couldn't even go with the shield right there. Yeah, it's not. Um, so we went to Party City, Kmart, uh -huh. Target, Walmart, all the big box stores. I couldn't even find t-shirts. So we ventured over to the kids section in Kmart uh -huh. to see. We did find some I'm stuff. I'm sure you did, because that's what it's geared towards anyway. Obviously. However, no single wrestlers on the shirt. Really? There was a surprise face on the shirt, front and center. Can you guess who that was? Um... I'm assuming they're no longer with the company. Oh, no, they are. Was it Kane? No. Um, surprise face? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Still with the company. <sighs> Jinder. Fuck, you're right. Yes. <laughs> Front and center. Here, <laughs> heel Jinder Mahal. Nice. I was like, who were they catering towards with this crap? I, I don't Yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> back on to... Uh, I'm glad I was right. ...some wrestling here. So, I mean, we, we did get somewhere. Uh, I didn't fall asleep for any wrestling this week. Really? Yeah. Wow. So we're, I don't uh, really think that speaks to the product. I think it probably just speaks to the fact that you weren't tired. Oh, no. I did start closing my eyes at one point. Yeah, so... But, uh... So, we opened Raw with your favorite segment, you know, the, uh... The, the pull apart. Yeah, it's basically become a cliche at this point. Yeah, I mean, uh, all we really found out is that there's a shitload of jobbers on Monday Night Raw. Uh, Finn Balor included. Yeah, your uh, microphone might fall off the desk there, pal. Nah, it's close enough. All right. Um, I haven't touched it. Yeah, I mean, oh. I guess since we needed to actually make some sort of heat for this feud well i guess this is why we do it yeah there's well w when you have a feud where you have three tag team matches where they team together three weeks in a row mm -hmm. um it kind of it's just really not a lot to it <laughs> so speaking of those tag matches i guess kurt posted up on twitter because either scott dawson or dash wilder said you know their accolade that they beat roman reigns and bobby lashley in a tag match mm -hmm. and kurt angle was like oh yeah those matches were all meaningless so can you tell me why the hell we're watching meaningless matches every week then? Because the the they can't think of anything better to do. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> and so when are we gonna go to uh, anger management or therapy? You know, between Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns, we got Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens. But no, let's let's ruin something that actually started to turn into something mm -hmm. with Bailey and Sasha, mm -hmm. and then just have it be a basic small turd that's rolling downhill becoming a bigger turd they're, and then we're not going to care when the match happens they're afraid i don't know why they're afraid to do it um because it you know it would work out perfectly i really don't understand like the whole nonsense but uh, no we're gonna get nia jackson alexa bliss yeah that's what i'm looking forward so to. I, I think I heard something about, like, uh, someone did, like, a Google Trends thing yeah. with, like, the women, mm -hmm. and I think it was five of them. Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Charlotte, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. Mm -hmm. Alexa Bliss was the number one, like, over the course of, like, two oh, years. Yeah, I believe it. So She's I been the hardest pushed, pretty much. Yes, but I think that that coupled with you know the fact that she's very good yeah that kind of 
And you, Nia Jax is a good opponent for Alexa because of the fact that she needs to come up with a reason or a way to beat her. Mm-hmm. Whereas it'd be a lot easier for them to just have Sasha and Bailey lose to her. Yeah. But, I mean, the in-ring product is absolute crap between the two of them. Well, they, they don't work well together yes. because of the size right. difference. But, so. I mean, that's the only thing working in their favor is that this match is one of the few matches that actually have a stipulation. It's going to be, what, an Extreme Rules yes. match? Yes, this is so. the one Extreme Rules right. match, which yes. is so funny. But, I mean, it's something different in this, so I'll at least give them credit there. Well, the only reason why they did it is because Ronda Rousey is going to interfere and said. Mm. So that's fair. Um, I would imagine that because Mickey James is also going to be out there probably. So exactly. Ronda will get involved seemingly to help Naya, mm-hmm. but eventually ele- letting Alexa Bliss win this way, she'll be able to. Face oh yeah. We're Alexa getting Alexa and Ronda at SummerSlam. Yeah. yeah. So that's probably what's going to happen anyway. So it really doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, because what, what she might even do is, like, knock out both of them and then just throw Alexa on Naya to... That's probably yeah, what will end up happening. Yeah, I guess that's happening. fair. Um, I guess we'll talk more about that in our predictions yeah. video. Yeah, so... Um, we got Mojo and Ho- Noe Jose, yeah, finally. He, he won with a non-finisher. Yeah. Although that did look painful. He did an Alabama slam, yeah. which is oh, basically so just Alabama slam. That was a regular, regular one. one? Yeah. It, it's you just throw them on their neck, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it you know makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have a feud between Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins mm-hmm. that basically should only be about in-ring competition. Should be. They have a title, and then they had to add garbage this week mm-hmm. because apparently Drew McIntyre likes you know sheep. Yes. Um, um, this uh, the the promo was too long. Yeah. That was the biggest issue, because basically uh, Seth and Dolph just told you what an Iron Man match is. There's really all oh that. yeah yeah that's yeah. all that really happened. Mm-hmm. And so, they went for what a half hour on Raw a couple weeks ago. It was like 27 minutes. It was a while. Yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> so if this promo was much shorter and it skipped the whole describing what an Iron Man match thing is, it probably would have been a lot better. Yeah, easier to digest. Yeah. Um, but basically, this led to a challenge between Seth and um, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre. Yes. And if McIntyre wins, he will be able to be there for the Iron Man match. If he loses, he is barred from ringside. Yeah, which is so, stupid to begin with. It is. But, I mean, you had to think about it. It's like, is Seth going to beat McIntyre and then lose to Ziggler? No. Honestly, that's what I figured no, was going to happen. I didn't think. Yeah. I figured that. You know, Drew was going to win, like he did. Mm-hmm. And then some co- sort of miscommunication happens at Sunday between Dolph and Drew, and then that turns into a feud between the two of them. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Unless they have Dean come back. I don't know if he's cleared to wrestle yet. I, I was thinking more along the lines of... Or Jason of, Jordan? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thinking more along the lines of uh, uh, Ziggler keeping the title. Yeah. And then Seth moving on. To something else well we don't know what the hell is going on there since brock did show up at ufc, UFC over yeah. the weekend well it's already determined that the match between lashley and reigns is for the number one contendership so well they haven't said it they did no they didn't they could have swear they said it on smackdown Mm-mm. i don't think there's any stipulation for that no but maybe you could be I, I thought it was but i guess i could you be pay wrong. closer attention things to things than i do um, That's for damn sure. Um, yeah, well, I mean, one of the bright spots that has happened over the last couple of weeks, at least, was the uh, imitation of oh. Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas on Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy. So good. Yeah. So funny. However, they, they, they're they not going to win on Sunday. No, no, no. no. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, but was it Bo Dallas got a victory over Matt Hardy this week, hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's just advertised as a singles match, which probably eventually it will. I could have swore they said it. To be fair, they could have just been talking out their ass. That's true, but I, I, I whatever. Uh, da 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 Match between. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's let's continue about the B team. Yeah. Um, at least it's entertaining. I mean, oh yeah. I think it tickles everybody when Bo Dallas pretends to be Bray Wyatt. Yep. 
It's such a shame we never got his brother. Got to see them in the ring together, but there's still time. I, it's true. This, this feud's not going to be over. Uh, that and the fact that there's no way Matt and Bray are going to team forever. That's so, because Bray's going to be in the company a lot longer than Hardy will. So. Mm-hmm. It's sure. significantly younger. Sure. Uh, um, Fandango's injured. I think he's out for what six months. That's what I heard. Rotator so. cuff. Uh, that I don't know. I was some I kind of shoulder injury. Mm-hmm. I think that. I just know he did it. not get bit by a dog. Um. <laughs> Luckily, so, Shinsuke did re- yeah. recover though. Um, so Breeze was on TV for a very very short time, and for the first time, pretty much since the first day of the show. Well, no, didn't they have a couple matches against the B team? Where they lost, maybe two in a row. I guess that would make sense. And then they got destroyed by the Authors of Pain too. Yeah, yeah. All right. I think that's about it. Fair enough. But yeah, um, he's he's not going to do anything. Until no, I, he's he'll just be goes back. The, be, the best case scenario is he just doing what he did this week and offer fashion tips to, to everybody in the back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because um, he did that to the Riot Squad, and they said they don't need fashion. Mm-hmm. Which did you watch? Uh, Ross's WTF moments. Yeah. <laughs> Where apparently Liv Morgan loves doing fashion stuff. Right. That's so. all on our Instagram, apparently. Whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, Ember's definitely been a bright spot of the women's division this on Monday like Night Raw. She's the best wrestler on... Yeah, I know, but kind of under the radar. Like, she's always doing yeah. good stuff, yeah. but never a focal point. No. Well, she was in NXT, and she's only been up for, like, two months. Yeah, I guess that's true. And she was in the Money in the Bank match. Yeah. And right, she did fair a lot of good spots in the Money in the Bank. Fair enough. So, fair enough. It, it's just, she hasn't been around long enough. And right now, they're too Ronda Rousey obsessed to yeah. put her in a good feud. That's fair. So, basically, they're just going to make her look good uh, beating up on the Riot Squad for mm-hmm. a while. Yeah. So, because do we know how long Ruby's going to be out for? I think it was just a sprain she had, but I guess probably be a couple weeks because they didn't mention it again this week. The fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, it because does her... in the sense that she's the best part of the riot. Yes, squad. but either way, they're still gonna be <laughs> on just TV. a group of gob- jobbers. Yeah, so that's fair. Really doesn't matter that if she's fair. there or not. Mm-hmm. They're still gonna lose constantly against mm. whoever they're facing. Yep. Um, uh, I thought this was funny. I was just thinking about it to myself. But uh, a wrestling promotion called Rise, it's a women's promotion. They mm-hmm. have a tag team called the Wiley Smileys. I think that should be Finn and uh, Bobby Roode's name. Smiling so much. Yeah, Stupid that bastards. Is, that is fair. Um, that would make sense. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people were hoping that Roode would turn heel against Balor here, but it didn't make any sense for them to do it at this point. No, there, there's no benefit to it. Roode's Not yet. just there. Yeah, I mean, the- they... He's not doing anything. So did this in the future, maybe. Yeah, but you would need to actually establish some kind of friendship with Balor. I guess that's true. The last time they were in the ring together was in the Money in the Bank match, mm-hmm. where they were enemies. And then, oh, speaking of which, so on. when they opened the show with the whole Bobby Lashley Roman nonsense, uh huh. So Finn got one shot in on Corbin, and they just kept themselves apart I, I yeah think there should have been more there well i figured they were going to just split off entirely and then it would just end up being the two of them fighting, fighting in the yeah i mean yeah that would have made more sense apparently i guess corbin and finn had a match at a house show and apparently it went really bad so i think finn schooled him like the entire match because of it yeah i, I so could have sworn finn's he... a very good wrestler and baron's an okay wrestler yeah um yeah, we got to see Bobby Roode and Finn Balor in the ring with Elias again. That's what we always wanted to see. Mm-hmm. And Baron Corbin sung uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider. Yeah. 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 Um, some of it's kind of embarrassing. A little bit, but <laughs> it, 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 it kind of makes sense because yeah. it's basically having someone who doesn't seem like he has like a musical talent and just forcing him on it. I guess. To be with Elias. So it's strange, yeah. It's... But it it does kind of like fit because he's trying to show camaraderie with his teammate. I guess kind that's of. fair. Um, we did, however, learn that Braun Strowman will face Kevin Owens in a steel cage match. I guess this is so Kevin Owens has no place to run. Yeah, it was funny because Kevin Owens showed up with a doctor's note saying he can't okay. compete mm-hmm. tonight. So he got to hang out in Kurt's office because apparently it was the safest place to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so is this going to end with Braun throwing Owens through the cage and Owens winning and just running away? Probably. 
That would be the only logical way to do this. Um, because why continuously have Braun destroy, like, destroy him, him week after week and there's then no, win the match? Yeah, there's no, no there's, it's not interesting at no, all. No, no. Um, and Braun's basically been a comedy act now. Uh, yeah, well, there's really not much you can but, do with him. I mean, him. we were still very confused as to why they put the briefcase on him in the first mm-hmm. place, unless mm-hmm. they had something in place, and I do not think they do have anything no. in place. Well, they still got to figure out what the hell's going on with Brock. Mm-hmm. I don't think they know right now. Uh, no, or this is another. They do know what's going on, and they're just trying to throw the fans off again. Maybe they're working with the UFC in this whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. well, they're definitely some kind yeah. of co- a collaboration. Yeah. There's no way that they're just doing it. Oh, no, um, no, no. So, but whatever. Uh, though we, we did have a good main event. Seth Rollins yeah. versus mm-hmm. Drew McIntyre, mm-hmm. which is not a surprise at all. We knew it was going to be good. Um, this harkens back to not as good, but uh, Drew's match with uh, Oni Lurkin on NXT. <laughs> he did that spot where he's like hanging from underneath and he just throws the other guy mm-hmm. fantastic yeah drew mcintyre's awesome he is um, he will be universal champion one day probably if I, it ever comes off of lesnar i was gonna say honestly i wouldn't be surprised if he beat lesnar because ah. he's believable yeah it's true oh yeah absolutely so it, if anything that like if if he just like just won or one night lesnar and Heyman came out and they were yapping and then he just, like and they like they want to do something big mm-hmm. and they just want to have Lesnar drop it on Raw, which right. probably wouldn't happen. Did you see that he's being advertised for the Monday after SummerSlam? Because it's at the Barclays. Center. It's not a huge surprise. No, but I mean they actually said it on the commercials because they were advertised. It was probably a local commercial for mm-hmm. us since we're near yeah. there. But I was just kind of surprised that they said see Brock Lesnar. At Monday Usually night. he's around around the pay-per-views. Yeah, so but, yeah, because we don't know if he's even going to be at some I'll rephrase that. The pay-per-views he's actually going to be attending. That's true. Um, but, like I said, um, I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to like throw a big swerve, have him lose on Raw to a guy like McIntyre, who is legitimate. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. He went over with, of course, Dolph getting involved. Mm-hmm. I honestly was surprised because Dolph's involvement didn't affect um, Seth. No, it just, just distracted, distracted him. him. Yeah, and then uh, McIntyre, McIntyre was caught able... him off guard with the Claymore, yes. and that was that. Yep. All right, so click the the link that I added to the notes. I don't know if you're gonna entirely get the reference, but I'm sure you will. What the hell are you doing? It's, it's uh, the some graph. Kind of bar no. graph. No, just copy and paste it. I did. Hold on. Are you sure? I searched it. Let's see. Come on. And you're terrible at this. A little bit. Paste. Oh, it didn't work. That's weird. All right, well, anyway, it's uh, one of Enzo's new uh, shorts that he put out. And where the crotch is supposed to be, it says consensual. Oh, that's really funny. That, but, I mean... It, if you were accused of such things, would you? Oh no, it's horrible. <laughs> but it's funny. Put it in the bar. Oh, that's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> and with the poop emoji on the back. I guess the real one makes sense now. Yeah. Well, he's always got the poop emoji. Yeah. It's not gonna load. Better not have given me a virus. Yeah. Wow. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's not, it's not but great. But moving on to it's bad... It's not even a poop emoji. It's, uh, it's just, just a, a picture of poop. Whatever. Uh, so moving on to bad merchandise, how about that terrible Team Hell No shirt that Daniel Bryan was wearing on SmackDown? Yeah, it's just his arms with Kane's mask on it, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, it's not good. Um, but, you know, they yeah. want to, I guess, push merch for the two of them. I, I guess, but I could have sworn they had another shirt that was at least decent looking. Maybe. Yeah, whatever. I honestly have no idea. It's bad. Um, But yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, So SmackDown opens with Miz TV. Mm -hmm. Um, Miz uh, calls out Team Hell No, tries to break him up. Yep. Stir the pot. Um, Apparently, not only is Miz bad at doing that, he's also a bad wrestler, Mm -hmm. according to Daniel Bryan. They were both going to attack Miz. Bludger Brothers come out. And Sanity comes out. Then so the new day five comes on out. two, which doesn't make any sense no. because what's the Miz doing? Right, 
Yeah. <laughs> I guess running away. Yeah. Maybe. Well, well, he's doing I, the best. I know it makes sense, but you know, you'd think since he, they had the advantage, he would get involved. Mm-hmm. But since they already had five, I guess it really didn't matter. It's true. <laughs> um, uh, I feel like Miz's involvement was supposed to be somewhere else. Like it feels like he's just thrown in there now. Uh, well, right now he's not doing anything. I know, but I mean, it feels like he was meant for something else, and they're just kind of giving this to him. Maybe. I mean, with. I'm sure the firing of Cass probably threw a wrench in the works somewhere along the line. Yeah, it could have kept Daniel Bryan busy, busy a little yeah. longer. And they Maybe. probably would have had Kane off TV, or who knows? Well, obviously Kane's not going to be around, yeah. except for, like, specific spots. Mm-hmm. Well, it was weird that Sanity was feuding with the Usos, and then a week later it was just completely different. Mm-hmm. And the only reason why they had that second match was because Shinsuke wasn't there, I think. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, it was the Usos and Jeff against Sanity. Yeah, right. So, mm-hmm. but whatever yep um, so obviously this led to a 10-man tag which was going to be our main event yes um for some reason they were advertising shinsuke versus aj uh-huh. and uh, that match did in fact happen yes because i texted you and i said oh they're just gonna end up changing this into a tag match of shinsuke and rusev 100 percent correct aj and jeff but why did we need that first part of the match and it was long i know it was like a full match and it had at least it had two commercials i think yeah. during oh it. yeah Mm-hmm. And then we went to commercial and came back, and then it was a tag match. Yeah. I, so, like, but, like it's fine, but well, to let's preface this with the fact that Russo was on commentary. Yes, he, he so was fantastic. he got involved sure. in the match, and then well, yeah, Shinsuke, no, AJ punched Aiden English because he was running his mouth. Yeah, and then AJ was standing in front of English, and Shinsuke went for the Kinshasa. AJ moved out of the way, so he hit Aiden English. Yeah. And, yeah. Rusev didn't appreciate that. Nope. Although Rusev was fantastic on commentary. He was because he's always He's like, "Why you do that? You did that on purpose." <laughs> yes, this is Rusev from Rusev Day. <laughs> and Aiden. Yes, and Aiden. <laughs> but yeah, that ate up a lot of time on oh, it SmackDown. Did. It it certainly did. Um, but yeah, uh what was it? Rusev pulls AJ off the apron when he's going for the phenomenal forearm. Mm-hmm. This allows uh Oh, no, then, then then the match gets thrown out. Right. AJ goes back into the ring. The two mm-hmm. of them start beating him up. Then Jeff comes out. Um, then, I guess, Paige came yeah, out and she made was the like, match. She's like, I would like to see the four of you wrestle. Yeah. And uh, so they made a tag match. And that happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, eventually Rusev wins after kicking Jeff with the Machka, Machka kick. kick. Yeah. Um, so it's not a surprise. No. Because someone had to lose. Yeah. And it makes more sense for Rusev to come on top, and mm-hmm. it doesn't make any sense for Rusev to pin AJ on the go-home. No. So it was literally Jeff's spot to get pinned. Yeah. Um, so it is what it is. Yep. And then we got the uh, Oscar versus Ellsworth. The, the Lumberjill match. Oh, they, they, they I know, said they, Lumberjack. I know. Multiple times. They used to call them Lumberjills. They used to. However, you know. Whatever. Silly bastards changing their mind. Um... This match was a mess. Oh, my God, yes. Because, if anything, it kind of just poorly depicts women. So, since yesterday was my birthday, we were eating cake uh-huh. while we were watching this. We ate it in the living room and everything, so everybody was watching this oh, with that's us. But it, it, wasn't, it wasn't as bad as the uh, Team Hell No and New Day stuff that Happened. followed this, uh-huh. where everybody said, okay, we're leaving the room now, because it was that cringeworthy. Oh, yeah, it, it was great. bad. Although Big E did show some conviction, at least. A little so. bit. And my sister knew who everyone was, because uh-huh. she used to watch with her boyfriend. Uh-huh. And she was like, all right, I'm leaving the room. This is bad. And I said, yeah, it is. Wow. It is. But wow. anyway, back to the Asuka Ellsworth crap. Yeah. So they obviously lumberjacks outside the ring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so for whatever reason, like Ellsworth kept on trying to leave slash getting thrown out of the mm-hmm. ring. And... F- the first couple times they were working together, but then eventually, as the women got closer to each they other, they start they beat each other. It made no sense. Like they're they're trying to tell a story where everyone's coming against this one person, right? Yet for some reason they mm-hmm. can't do that, nope. and it doesn't make any sense because none of them really have beef with each other because there's only one storyline going on in the women's division right now. <laughs> and this was the only uh, women's segment on the show, yeah. Right? Besides it, the backstage, crap yeah, it with makes Carmella. no sense. Uh, I did find it funny when Naomi and Becky picked up Ellsworth. Oh, and, and they dragged him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they're both stronger than he is, so yeah. it kind of makes sense. Oh, man. Um, but it was a mess. 
uh, eventually, um, Ellsworth ends up in the ring with Asuka after a while. Mm -hmm. uh, Carmella hands him pepper spray, I, I think. Yes. Um, and then she goes. He goes to use it on her. She ducks right. Ducks out of the way. Knocks Ellsworth into Carmella, Carmella who's on the apron. Then hit, gets him in the Asuka lock. He taps out. He could. She couldn't even get the transition into him correctly. That's because he's probably. <laughs> too weird looking uh, no um, it was bad and then after he taps out carmella attacks immediately yep. they use the pepper spray and then she super kicks oscar that's it yeah and then um, uh we are informed that ellsworth will be put in the shark cage above the ring for the oscar carmella match yeah it makes sense yeah like it does and it doesn't yeah it does. i mean they, they're completely like wasting him coming yeah. back because they're not doing anything interesting. They're just doing stupid stuff that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, I think Charlotte's, what, going to be out till SummerSlam or so? Something like that? I th yeah, it's just a couple months, something I think, like she was that. out. Yeah. So, um, this, I don't know if this is going to continue. I hope not. I, well, I, I, the, th the thing is, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I'm okay with them keeping the title on on uh, Carmella. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense for Charlotte to be the person to go after her after Oscar anyway. Right. Yeah, I guess that's true. So, like, Becky... Or yeah, Naomi, that would be fine. That would that would make sense. Yeah, but like it shouldn't go back to Charlotte. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm and, just no. Yeah, I, yeah. I I know I know that. I but, gotcha. Uh, my point is Charlotte's absence doesn't shouldn't affect any. It doesn't mm -hmm. really affect anything. That was my point. I gotcha. Oh, um, okay, yeah, fair enough. Because whether or not she's going to be there, she's not going to be involved in the title. Mm -hmm. So that's fair. If anything, when she comes back, she'll just feud with Becky, which would be great. And actually, something worth watching. That is true. <laughs> uh, we finally got the Sin Cara versus uh, Andrade C and Almas match. Yeah, two months in the making. Uh, I think it, it was, was something like that. I mean, they they put on a decent match no, it together. Was, it was a good match. I was surprised at the ending. But well, because he just uh, what he, he hit the double knees in the corner, and yeah. that was it. I think that's meant to be like a finisher. I guess because it is a very impactful move. The yeah. problem is other people use it. Yeah. So. Cause, well, I and mean, then Owen somersault into the corner. Could Andrade be. does a DDT yeah, for a finisher. The, uh, yeah, the hammerlock, hammerlock DDT. DDT. Yes. So, but you know, maybe they're trying to not have him do that. I don't know. That would make sense. No, we'll see. Because there's a chance that maybe it looks too much like the Dirty Deeds. That that would be my thought. I don't know. Um. Anyway. Yep. So obviously, Amos wins. Mm -hmm. Um. And then finally, he uh, wrestled an actual. Match, uh, well, an actual roster member. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't guess. really count other matches. Mat like well, yeah, the matches yeah. are really hard matches fair. anyway. That's fair. Um, and then that leads us to our main event with yep. the New Day and Team Hell No versus the Bludgeon Brothers and Sanity. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't terrible. No, it was it was a big mess. Yeah. Oh, but it's it kind of makes sense. And the best part is there's one person on the. Uh, it's because. The team of Sanity and Blood Brothers, Eric Young is the smallest. Yeah. And he's not, he's like the same size as most of the other team. And there's only one big guy on the other team. <laughs> it's true. So it's very seemingly uneven. Yeah. But, you know, it yeah, works. Daniel out. Bryan, so. It's true. Uh, actually, Daniel Bryan ends up hitting uh, Eric Young with a high knee yeah. and uh, gets the win. Yeah. So. Uh, Going strong into. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, and we got the uh, announcement that it'll be New Day versus Sanity for, in a tables match yes, they, on the pre-show. Yeah, they announced that, I think, before the show, probably. Yeah, it was on, some point in the show. On Facebook. No, they, they said that they made the decision before the show. Oh, okay. I would imagine if we looked into it, we would see some kind of announcement fair that enough. happened mm -hmm. an hour or two before the show. That's fair. On Facebook or Twitter or something. There we um, go. So, yeah. yeah. I don't even think that... Oh, no, it's on here. Yeah. It was the last one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say it's on the pre-show, but we already it know it will be. It did yesterday when I looked, which is odd. That is really weird. It, it was numbered because it said P next to it. Huh. It was the first one. Yeah. That's very strange, yeah. but whatever. But, yeah. It is what it is. So, um, yeah, we have Extreme Rules on Sunday. Yes. A very lackluster seeming pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, with... Well, there's not many stipulations, and we know that we, uh, yeah, that's upsetting. WWE title is not going to main event the show probably. It, no, don't definitely won't. Nah. They they said on many occasions Raw's main event, and you yeah. know Raw always usually Trump's main event SmackDown. Yeah. I don't think there's been a pay per view where Raw hasn't main evented 
in some capacity. Yeah, probably not. So, but whatever. Whatever. Yep, yep, yep. yep. So, uh, that is all we have for you guys this week. We will be next, well, we will see you next for our uh, Extreme Rules Preview and Predictions video. It's going to be fun. You tell yourself that. <laughs> all right. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.